Speaker, I'm pleased to speak to the third reading of the Infrastructure Bill. This bill is part of the Government's initiatives to improve infrastructure that is vital to our economic future and it is also part of our commitment to review regulation and remove red tape. The bill is an omnibus bill in four parts covering three areas – changes to utilities access arrangements to transport corridors, changes to the New Zealand Railway Corporation Act 1981 and the repeal of the Affordable Housing Enabling Territorial Authorities Act 2008 with the retention of an amended restrictive covenants provision related to social housing. The Government is focused on growing the economy and creating jobs with better infrastructure such as roads, broadband, rail and electricity networks. Jobs and growth are essential if New Zealanders and New Zealand is to get ahead. The development of an inf infrastructure is central to lifting New Zealand's productivity and improving future economic growth. Mr Speaker, this bill reflects the nat Nationals' commitment to building a stronger economy that will provide growth for all New Zealanders and to provide the social infrastructure that New, New Zealanders need. The Government is spending $6 billion per year on infrastructure projects. Specifically, in the most recent budget, there is $500 million upgrade of Auckland Rail and a $250 million um, in, uh, money put aside for wider rail network and rolling stock. There's $200 billion on the rollout, sorry, $200 million on the rollout of ultra-fast broadband, and there is $10.7 billion over 10 years for state highways. State highways account for 50% of road use in New Zealand. Therefore, an advanced state highway system is essential to maintain effective linkages throughout the country. The money that the government has committed reflects how important infrastructure is to the government's wider economic policy programme and New Zealand's longer-term economic prospects. Mr Speaker, the government's billions of dollars boost to state highway funding has provided a secure funding pipeline which has given contractors the confidence to continue investing in people and machinery and complete projects more quickly. High calibre high infrastructure matters because it supports productivity and economic competitiveness. An important spin-off from this commitment is that in the global recession, effective investment in productive infrastructure has supported many thousands of jobs around the country. The Infrastructure Bill removes unnecessary barriers to infrastructure development and improves the consistency of regulatory arrangements. Part 1 and 2 improve arrangements for managing access by utility operators to transport corridors, roads, railways and motorways. Part 1 also establishes a framework for a national code of practice governing how utility operators and corridor managers coordinate their activities. Part 3 amends the New Zealand Railways Corporation Act 1981 to remove some of the statutory restrictions that negatively affect the running of the New Zealand Railway Corporation's business. Part 4 appeals the Affordable Housing Enabling Territorial Authorities Act 2008 while keeping an amended prohibition of restrictive covenants affecting social housing. Mr Speaker, local authorities were concerned that this Act is complex, costly and overly prescriptive. While it was intended to provide local authorities with regulatory tools to address problems of housing affordability, it has been viewed as a potential impairment to increasing the housing supply. Mr Speaker, the Infrastructure Bill is about removing barriers to infrastructure development, which this Government sees as critical if New Zealand is to move forward economically. I commend this Bill to the House. I call Carmel